This is a bit of an update for this week. Um, as you see, I'm looking a bit rough. That's actually two days of trying to uh, fix my Mac. <laughs> my Mac um, had this update and it crashed it and it took two days literally. I've been on the phone with the iMac support and I'll be honest with you, I have to say the support has been fantastic. It seems as if it's had a glitch at some point during the install or whatever, but I've spent literally hours on the phone with I'm the, the Mac support, the Apple guys, um, trying to get it work. And I, I've got to be honest, I'm pretty impressed with their support, but it'd be even better if the machine hadn't broken down. It's um, now going through a cycle of file recoveries. Um, so far it's recovered 26,000 documents. Um, Cause I'm looking for a specific document. Cause as you know, I do investments in crypto. And one of the cryptos has a file um, which is basically about two two thousand dollars in it. So I'm busy recovering that at the moment. Hopefully it finds it. If it doesn't, oh well, lesson learned. Um, I had the Western Digital or Cloud that's supposed to back up the Mac. That's that's what it's for, and it's done really well. It backing up absolutely nothing. So when I went to do the backup recovery, it just went. There's nothing here. And then when I checked and did some other stuff. There's only eight kilobytes of data. Fantastic. All this technology and none of it works. <laughs> but, well, what can you say? You know, I lose $2,000 today. It's just one of those things. Yeah, there's not a lot you can do about it. No point grumbling, more point of moving past it and recovering it somehow. Uh, whether I actually get the money back or I generate some other cash elsewhere. If you're in Europe, by the way, if you're at Aldi a little, they've got these lamps that are like curved like this. They're pretty good, and I'll show you why. Because one sits above my desk. Because they actually add some extra light. I think they're about 30 euros, 50 euros, I can't remember. Um, but you can see that they're pretty good at spreading the light. Spreading the light. Um, but the... The fact is, they're good, they're cheap, and even if your kids are into YouTube or stuff, it's a good, good cheap uh, solution to getting the, the light right. Because um, obviously I've had ring lights and all sorts trying to get the right angle of the lighting. I've got a couple of um, studio lights as well, but they're too bulky for this room. But this thing actually curves over the top of my monitor, so it's perfect. Um, so what else have I got going on this week? Um, I may be in Austria very soon. I'm just in the middle of clenching a deal. If that deal goes through, there should be some interesting stuff coming up. Um, April's mother's trip to the embassy is already sorted for the Spanish embassy. So that going well. We've already got all the accommodation booked, flights booked and everything else. So once all that's confirmed, we'll then see me over in the Philippines. Um, but I've got a few places I've got to do before we get there. We were supposed to be in Italy this weekend as well. Um, but we, we got a cruise, a three day cruise. Um, uh, but the problem was it leaves on the side of Italy, uh, just below, um, Croatia. And then it ends up around the other side of the foot. Well, leaving the car at port one, it was about 700 euros in a few days to try and get back across to pick pick the car up and quite simply it was a lot of hassle um so we sort of said we'll leave that one it's a pity um but hey oh you can't have everything so this weekend we're sort of at home but it's a good weekend at home anyway because it's been windy um not rainy just windy and the weekend before obviously we're in granada if you haven't seen the videos already i'll post a link to them above um so you can have a look at some of the videos from when we went to granada a few people have asked us did we go into the palace and stuff uh to be honest the weather was really bad um to the point that i would rather wait we're going to go back there anyway it's only three hours drive i'll switch that off for a minute i get so many messages um the the fact is the weather was so bad there quite simply I want to go there set up doing photography doing some nice pictures and stuff 
and quite simply, I couldn't get my um, camera out in the rain. Camcorder's fine. The camcorder we bought, um, the JVC one, is waterproof. That's why I bought it. It's, it's ideal for that. It, it has no issues with being drenched. Um, so that's what we bought that for. But my main camera, I don't want it going on a DSLR um, because the one that that replaced had this problem in the Philippines where it got moisture in it and then it sort of grew inside the uh, below the shutter. So the camera is basically knackered. I spent nearly two hundred um, pound. That's more than two hundred pounds. Let's put it this way: I spent a few quid on it, uh, getting it fixed by Canon in the Philippines. I might as well have just thrown it in the bin because um, that's where it is now. Well, it's in a cupboard somewhere, but it's um, completely useless. It wasn't working when they brought it back. It was a waste of money. It was, I would advise if you get a similar problem, unless it's a very expensive camera. Just pick it up, throw it away, and buy another one. It's just not worth the hassle. Um, but yeah, I didn't really want to get my DSLR soaked. So I'm going to go back. Um, might stop at a different place next time as well, because that was a nice hotel. The hotel was nice, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, but there was another place that was a bit more hippie. <laughs> uh, it's a log cabin place where they actually teach you about the environment and stuff and April says don't you take me there um, so that may not be the one that we'll be stopping at but there are there's other options out there uh, especially now we know where the old town that is um, and the access issues because we may end up driving up so far leaving the car out of town um, because if you stop out of town the parking's about half and then just basically um, stop in one of the nicer places right under the Alhambra which then gives us the, the old town to travel around. But it's one of those things I like doing, you know, unless you've got a tour guide that's with you, that's from the area and stuff, you gotta do these little fact finding things and actually understand the when you go the first time, you, you, I, I had the same when I went to Florida or in other places, you go there and then you suddenly go, oh, I should have done this, or I should have done that, there is this, you know, but when you go the second time, you prepare. So that, that's the case of this. It was like, we'll just do it. Hadn't planned it. Started look, trying to look for a hotel on a Friday. Eventually ended up on a Saturday. Drove down. Spent a, spent the weekend there. Kids had a great time. And that's all that matters. I mean, what, what I find funny is we had two big um, hotel rooms. And the kids wanted to sleep in the wardrobe. Because it's like... Um, there's like shelves the size of a um, four-seater table. So one above and one below. They were happy in there. You know, it's like, you've got your own rooms. Why, why, you know, it's like, no, no, we like this. And You know, even like when we come back to the hotel after being drenched in the rain, the kids, you know, you, can, you just want to chill out and read or do something. Kids are sat there with the books open inside the wardrobe because they slide the door shut and they're just sitting in there. You know, they want the light and everything in there, but it's one of those things. You know, when the kids, you ask them what was the best thing, you know, all the things they see and whatever, they're riding on the metro and all this stuff. It was the wardrobe. The wardrobe was <laughs> one of the best thing for the weekend. But it's something they'll remember. That's, that's the important bit. You know, that's all that matters. The kids having a good time. Trip down to Granada was quite good, or Grenada. Um, it always reminds me of an old joke, but I'm not going to say it. Or maybe I should. Grenada, so they did. But it, the the point being is the... When well, I say it's no joke, it's no spitting in the joke uh, relating to that time period. But it's just one of those things that sticks in your mind even from childhood. Um, but the, the point being is the kids had a good time. Is away from the house for the weekend. Even in the really bad rain the kids did not complain they had a good time the only place uh my son i asked him it did not like was the spanish inquisition there's like a exhibit there um he did not like it in there at all as soon as he went in it was just like you know it just didn't like it um so be aware if you have got young kids that may not like that sort of thing uh, taking them into a torture area is not the best thing to do. 
Zoe, on the other hand, was trying to climb inside the Iron Maiden, and I've even got photos of her trying to get on the uh, the hang <laughs> the hangman's uh, platform because she had actually got under the rope and was actually pulling at the hangman's and hangman's <laughs> noose. <laughs> well, that's Zoe. That's the stuff she gets up to. Um, but it's all good. It's a good a good trip. I mean, the thing is, we weren't really trying to do anything beyond a family holiday. At the end of the day, I've, I've learned to relax. And that's why sometimes people gr give me grief about, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. You know what? The only thing that's important when you've got kids is letting them enjoy themselves. That's it. Um, if you try to do all the stuff you would like to do as an adult, don't take the kids. As <laughs> simple as that. Um, I would have liked to spend a lot of time in the Alhambra, uh, which is this massive palace, um, but quite simply, it ain't gonna happen with the kids. And I can tell you now, if I set up for a perfect shot, got the uh, the fountain and the water, so everything's just perfect. I then have to drag one of the kids out of there because they probably jumped in there because that's what kids do, you know. You, you like, or if you probably notice, you'll see my son's head appear in a lot of videos and photos. He does it on purpose. But it's not for me to tell him off. At the end of the day, it's just being a kid. So, you know, I'll let them enjoy it themselves. Um, relating to comments this week, this is quite funny with some of the, been some positive comments and some negative ones. The positive ones I want to say, you know, someone's saying about me being straight shooting, I don't manipulate things, I don't do clickbait and all that stuff. It's because I hate it. I'll be honest with you, I hate it. I hate going on to Google and stuff. And having to go down to number 15 because everything above it is either an advert or complete junk. Um, I don't like clickbait. At the end of the day, if I was talking about things you should know before you move to Spain, it should be a video about things you should know before you move to Spain. But it's just going to discuss that thing. I'm not trying to oversell things. I don't do the uh, bubbly travel guy type of stuff i just say it as it is that's just me you know in the day if you want everything is great there's plenty of other channels that will tell you that um but myself i just say from my own experience as simple as that which gets on some of the negative ones which was i mean me and my wife having a bit of a laugh about that this week because the somebody had picked out two videos related to mental health of expats in the philippines and the funny thing is they commented on two of those and like said to my wife, I says, I'm being funny. If you've got nearly 2,000 videos and somebody comments on two videos related to mental health of the Philippines, there's a good chance they've got something mentally wrong with them. <laughs> because why did you select those two videos out of two, nearly, well, nearly 2,000 videos? Unless you're actually looking for something. Um... And I'll be honest with you, the big thing I have with mental health problems in the Philippines is that A, they become very destructive to the individual. It has a negative impact to the Philippines as a whole um, because these people can often become very aggressive and negative about the environment they're in. You know what? The Philippines hasn't really changed that much. It's often the people that come to it that are the problem, not the country. Um, the other side of that being is when you look at somebody like PV and look at the deterioration since he arrived in the Philippines, you can see why I recommend people that have pre-existing conditions do not come to the Philippines. There's no nanny state. Nobody's going to look after you. Nobody's going to wipe your bum for you. It's a case of you're, if you're unfit to travel, you're unfit to travel. Whether you like me saying it or not, it's quite simply look at this type of problem. And he's not the only one out there. And I'm not, the whole point is, he's just a very good example of why you need to be very careful if you do have pre existing conditions. Um, but then you have the little bit that does bug me a lot, which is when they get involved with Filipinas. Um, because you end up with a lot of Filipinas dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety and pressures that they did not expect because the new boyfriend, the new husband, did not warn them that they have a lot of problems, you know, and they, they become a nightmare. And I know at least seven women that are dealing with very bad husbands, not because they're bad in like um, 
physical ways, but it's it's mental torture in some ways. You know, at the end of the day, when you start being very, very aggressive in the things you're doing and controlling, um, it's not good. It's not a good relationship. But at the same time, there's a craving for the ownership of the person because um, they need that control. And that's, that's the sad bit, is at the end of the day, they will often use the fact that they may do something to themselves if the other person leaves them. And the other person is often a, um, an understanding person, but they're constantly being pushed to the limits. Um, so from that point of view, that's why I'm not a fan of people that are quite simply a world problem in the sense of stay in your own world and don't come to the Philippines. Taxpayers, dollars, whatever, or euros, sterling, they already fund your healthcare where you are. Um, you shouldn't come to the Philippines and be a nightmare to somebody else. And I'm very strong on that, quite simply because you have such a negative impact on others. And that's as simple as that. Because the viewpoint, <laughs> the viewpoint of this person, which is the, the whole point of these two videos that he selected, because I said, well, hang on, there's 2,000 videos, this is the two he's looking at. It's he seemed offended by me discussing this topic. Yeah, I'm actually trying to help people by saying, if you're not up to it, don't do it. Nobody's going to bail you out. Nobody's going to look after you. And to be honest, a lot of people go on about the e-begging stuff. And I'll be honest with you, I hate it. I'm not a fan of charities. I'm not a fan of NGOs. I believe in direct in, uh, intervention because you do away with a lot of the problems in these countries by simply removing some of the problems that come from your country, which is the administration charges, the processing fees, and all the other bits and pieces. Um, I mean, if I look at Typhoon High End, even JCB used it as a PR thing to bring some JCBs over from the UK. At the same time, right along Pier 1, there is nothing but plant equipment just parked up and nobody's using it. Yeah, we have to bring brand new ones from the UK and give them away. What's the sense in that? Um, but anyway, that's that's my uh, point on this. And I'll leave it at that for this week's update. Love to hear your comments and just chat away below. Um, thanks for watching.